In a 2020 survey, Upwork listed web design as one of the top 10 skills that clients were looking for when hiring on their platform. So that means there's a lot of folks out there looking for people just like you on Upwork. But here's the thing. You can't just create an account on Upwork and expect the jobs just to come rolling in. No, you've got to learn how to make a solid bid. And that's exactly what we're talking about on this week's episode of the Self Made Web Designer Podcast. Are you ready? Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Self Made Web Designer Podcast. I'm I'm so excited that you are here with me again on another week. We should just keep doing this. We should just keep hanging out every week like we've done for over a year now. It's been fantastic. If you're new to the show, I want to say welcome. Uh, it's a party here. We have a lot of fun and we learn a lot of really cool stuff on how to be a successful freelance or career web designer. And this week we are talking about one of my favorite platforms. We are talking about Upwork. Upwork is the biggest freelancing platform in the world. And if you know a little bit about my story, you know that it played a huge role in me even becoming a web designer. The majority of the projects that I got when I first got started came from Upwork, and I'm still getting projects to this day. But because the platform is so popular, there's you've got some competition. And that doesn't need to be a negative thing. No, there are things that you can do to stand out as a freelancer that make you the person that a client says, that's the freelancer that I want to hire. And the main thing to do that is by creating a bid, a project pitch that is irresistible. So we're gonna be talking about that. I've even got a template that I am giving away for free that you can download on this episode's webpage or in the show notes from whatever platform that you are listening to this podcast on. So download that template and it'll help you make a winning bid on the projects that you are pitching for on Upwork. All right, are you ready to talk about how to make a winning bid on Upwork as a freelancer? All right, let's do it. As a web designer and someone who prides himself on focusing a little bit more on conversion rate optimization, a little bit more on the data of things, I think one of the first steps that we need to take is to look at your data as a freelancer. Upwork has some statistics for you to consider and to learn how to be better on the platform. And the way that you do that is if you log into your account on the very top menu, there's a link that says find work. Scroll over that and you will see a link below that that says my stats. Click on that. There are three stats that they give you in this little section. One of them is called client satisfaction. Another one is called communication effectiveness. And the final one is marketing. We're going we're gonna to take a peek at marketing here because this tells us a little bit about what we are doing correctly with our pitches, with the bids that we are giving to potential clients on the projects that we are trying to get. So there's three stats on this marketing effectiveness score that Upwork has given us that we want to focus on. The first one is how often your profile is viewed in comparison to others in your area of skill. The second one is how many times you're interviewed in comparison. And the final one is how often you are hired in comparison. So each of these stats can tell you something about the effectiveness of your bids. If you're not getting a lot of views on your profile, it might be time to spruce it up a little bit, to change some of the copy on it, to add a better or more updated headshot of you. Make it really beautiful. Do your hair up. Take a shower before, guys, for those of you who need a little bit of help with grooming stuff. Or maybe you need to tailor your profile to reflect your skills a little bit better. Maybe you have too many skills on there. Like, I've seen a ton of freelancers who put 
put up to 10 or 15 different skills there when really you need to have two or three. You need to have a focus. Like Chris Doe has mentioned on the previous episode, niching down into what you do and how you do it is super important. So that can affect how often your profile is viewed. Or uh, maybe you're getting a lot of interviews, but you're not getting hired. And that might mean you need to work on your communication skills a little bit. You need to work on the interview process. So you do a little bit of mock interviews with some friends who want to act as fake potential clients and maybe get over some of the nervousness that you might feel or maybe define your process a little bit better so that you can communicate it a little more clearly. It doesn't really matter what your stats are. It, what matters is the conclusions that you come to after looking at them. Those conclusions can help you know what you can do to change things and make it more likely to get a winning bid on Upwork in the future. So the process should look something like this. You look at your stats, you make a hypothesis on how to improve, and you test that hypothesis. And you do this until you get more and more effective with the pitches that you're making on projects. So look at the stats, come up with an idea as to how to improve some of those stats, make a change, whether it's in your profile, whether it's in how you're interviewing, whether it's how you're pitching, how you're communicating, what you're going to do within that first interaction with the client. Test that out and then see if it gets better. Do that enough and you will win more and more bids on Upwork. Number two, be selective on the projects that you bid on. The general idea is that not every project is worth your time. And I see a lot of freelancers make this mistake. They sign up for Upwork and then they bid on every single project that looks remotely close to something that they might be able to help out with. The problem is, is that amongst however many projects there are, I think there was something like 500 projects a week for web designers, 500 new ones a week for web designers. There's a very small portion, a very small percentage of projects that are going to be perfect for you. So this is a little bit of gold digging. You're looking to see what are the skills that these people are really looking for and do I have those skills? What type of project do they have and am I fitted for that project? You can even dial in the type of client that you are trying to go for. And this is really important, not just on Upwork, but as a freelancer in general. You need to create what is called an ideal client. And this is the type of client who is perfect for you and you are perfect for them. A lot of people even go so far as to give that person a name. They give that person a playlist on Spotify of songs that they like to listen to. They give that person a set of books that 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 person is red. You want to go as specific as possible, not in any form of generality, because the more specific you get, the more you'll be able to identify when that client comes along so that you can jump at the opportunity to work with them. So my encouragement here is to get as specific as you can, even down to the industry. As Amy Porterfield has said before, and I will repeat because she is awesome, the riches are in the niches. And you know it's good advice when it rhymes. Actually, that's not true, but it is good advice. And But why is that true? Because if you know exactly who you are suited for, you can charge more and you won't waste your time with clients that aren't right for you. You won't waste your time bidding on projects on Upwork that you have no business bidding on. So be selective on the projects that you bid. Another way to really be selective and to find those projects is learn the filtering within Upwork's system. Upwork has some really advanced filtering that you can do to make sure that the projects that you're seeing on your job feed are best suited for you. 
and I've talked about this before in a podcast, you go to your job feed and you click advanced search. When you click that, you get another screen that you can enter some really specific details on the type of job that you're looking for. So for example, let's say we're looking for jobs that have the words web designer in them and maybe something like WordPress or Photoshop or Sketch in them. And so we hit enter, that leads us to another page that we can filter down even more, down to the budget that the client has, down to the experience that the client is looking for, down to the amount of different jobs that this client has hired for before. And so you want to kind of take an inventory of, again, who is it that would best suit your services, your skills, and even where you're at at this season in your freelancing. So for instance, when I was brand new as a freelancer, I figured that I don't have as many skills as the experts out there. So even if I was able to pitch myself as an expert and maybe they give me the time of day, I wouldn't be able to prove myself as an expert. So I was looking for folks who were looking for beginners. They were looking for someone who was just getting started. I also figured that people who were looking to hire somebody that was just getting started probably wasn't looking to pay a lot of money to those beginners. And so I filtered out all the really high paying jobs. So that left me with only a few options that I could actually bid on. And it made my search results much more effective when it came to bidding. And as time went on, that would change and it will change for you as well. I went up into the intermediate category and then on to the expert and my budget got bigger and bigger as well. So this is the process that you want to go through with yourself. Look at it from your client's perspective. Who would they be trying to go for if they were looking for someone like you? What types of things would they be putting in their job description? What types of categories would they be clicking on? Beginner, intermediate, or expert? And then make a decision and filter out the ones that don't fit for you perfectly. Another thing that you want to consider when making a winning bid on Upwork is the job posting freshness. Job postings have a shelf life. Just like you don't want to be eating chocolate pudding that's been sitting in your cabinet for the last five years, you don't want to bid on a project that has been sitting there for a long time time. There's three things that you want to look for here. The first one is how long ago the job was posted. The second one is how many bids does the posting have? And the final is whether or not someone is being interviewed already. You can find all of this data on the job posting itself. The amount of time the job posting has been live is up at the very top. And then if you scroll down, you're able to see a section that says activity on this job. And that will tell you how many proposals that it has. And then right underneath that is a little title that says interviewing. And it could be anywhere from one to zero to I've seen upwards of like 20. So here's a few things that I am looking for when it comes to job posting freshness. I'm looking for the job to have been posted fairly recently. And we're talking about within the last few hours. If a job has been there for a month, it's likely that the client has moved on and they're probably not going to hire someone from Upwork for this project. I would even go so far as to say that past four or five days, you're less and less likely to actually get an interview. The client has maybe already made a decision on the freelancer that they want to hire or they've lost interest in the project altogether. You want something to be fairly recent. So I look within at least the last few hours. If you can get something within the last 30 minutes, your chances go up and up. Another thing is the amount of proposals that the job has on it already. I have put jobs up on Upwork before as a client. And let me tell you, it is overwhelming. You get something like 50 plus bids from freelancers out there, okay? There's a lot of people trying to get work on the platform. And so the more bids that there is on a project, the less likely 
that you will get seen or you will grab the attention of the client. And so just as you want something that's been posted recently, you want something that doesn't have a lot of proposals on there. I tend to look for jobs that have anywhere from zero to five postings. Occasionally I'll go up from there, but that's really the sweet spot is zero to five. And finally, if a job is already interviewing somebody, you're even less likely for them to start interviewing you. That means that the client has gone through the trouble of looking through bids. They looked through freelancers profile and they reached out to a specific freelancer and they said, hey, I want to talk to you about this job. If they've already done that much work, it's a lot less likely that they're gonna say, yeah, go ahead, let's start chatting about this project. It doesn't necessarily mean that you won't get an interview. You, you, sometimes I even bid on projects where they're already interviewing freelancers and I actually get an interview. So it's not like this is a rule that is set in stone. But in general, these are the types of things that I'm looking for in a project's freshness. So look through all of these things and consider how that affects the likelihood of you going from pitching to a client to actually getting an interview with them. Number five, one of the most, if not the most important factors in making a winning Upwork bid is the bid itself. And there's a lot of things that you want to focus on that you want to do within your bid. First of all, you want to do some research. You don't want to go in cold and give some generic bid or generic pitch on an Upwork project. You want to look at the description of the job and take notes. What are they asking for? What's their timeline? Then you want to look and see if there are any clues that give away who this person is and what company they work for. So you're doing a little bit of client reconnaissance, okay? Like you're, you're, you're doing a little bit of digging into who the person is that is looking to hire a freelancer. And sometimes they put the name of the company within the job descriptions, and sometimes they keep it intentionally vague. So you can either find that info there, or you might have to do a little bit of digging. You might have to look at the client's past hires on the Upwork platform. And you can kind of see through some of the feedback that other freelancers have given. You can either figure out a first name or sometimes feedback from other freelancers kind of give away what the business is and what type of stuff they're doing. Any type of information that you can get that you can be specific on in your bid will help you to be a freelancer that the client decides to interview. So do a little bit of research. Also, make an impact with your first sentence. You only have 40 characters from your bid before there's a read more link, at which point the client has to go from seeing a whole list of different pitches to only yours. So if you don't capture their attention in the first 40 words, it's going to be tough to keep going from there. So don't give them really general information about who you are and how amazing you would be as their freelancer and how long you've been doing this. Everybody does that. Everybody starts out with, hello, my name is Chris and I'm a web designer, web developer. I'm a UX designer. I'm a conversion rate optimizationalist. I know a little bit of SEO. Like that is totally totally annoying as a client. It's the first sign that I don't want to work with you and a lot of clients will feel the same way. Tell them something specific to their project right at the beginning and then give them something that you will do specifically on that project to make it a success. That will, this will grab their attention and make them more likely to give you an interview. Another thing that you want to do is leave two to three latest projects in your cover letter. You need to have a little bit of proof of what you can do in the cover letter. After a client clicks on you, you don't want to make them work to see the past projects that you've done in your profile. The more work that they have to do to learn about you, the less likely you are to get hired. So I always put about three of the most impressive projects that I have done right at the end of every 
cover letter. And if you don't have three, or maybe it's been a while since you've done projects, or maybe you only have three, you don't have to give away all of that information. All you have to do is say, here are my three latest projects. Another thing you want to do in your bid is make it all about them. So many freelancers make it about themselves. They say things like, here are all of my great accomplishments. Here are all the things that I'm really good at. But you've got to remember here, you are not the hero of this story. The client is. The client needs you to be their guide, not their savior. So take the focus off of yourself and put it on them. Talk about how the project you're going to help them with will help advance their vision. Use pronouns like you and your way more than you would me and my. Another thing you want to do is is give them something a little bit special. Give them something that sets you apart from all the other people bidding on this project. A, A simple way to do that is to make a really quick YouTube video that you link to in the proposal. This doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to give away everything that you're going to do or all the details that you don't even really know just yet. You can just do a simple introduction and tell them about how excited you are to work with them on their project. Another added benefit of doing something like this is that you can actually see how many times your video has been viewed. So you can see whether or not clients are looking at your project bid and then going on to view your video. So it's a little bit of data analysis that you get by doing this. So give them give them a little something special. Another thing you wanna do is tailor your bid to the project description. Not every client is looking for the exact same type of bid. And I've heard this said before that you wanna give as much information away as you possibly can down to how you would do the project and how long it's gonna take. And listen, that, that may may work for some clients, but it doesn't always work. For instance, most of my bids on projects that I have won have been maybe 100 words or less. So I am finding clients that aren't looking for me to write a novel to them. They're looking for a real brief, this is who I am, this is how I can help you, here's some proof of that, let me know if you want to work together. That has been way more effective than me trying to tell them a life story and tell them how amazing their business is and tell them all the steps that I would take. No, save some of that for the interview, but that's not always the case. That's why you've got to look at the project description to see what kind of clues the client is giving away. For instance, if a client puts a lot of information in the job description, they're most likely interested in getting a lot of information back from a freelancer. They've most likely put a lot of effort into how they're wording things, what exactly they're looking for. And so if you come in there with only a few lines and a few links and you're on your way, they're probably not going to look at you. However, if the client is real brief, if they're to the point, then you know you can be brief and to the point. You want to kind of mirror what you are seeing is the personality from the client within the job description. The point is look for cues about who the client might be in their project description and tailor how you interact with them based on that. Finally, in your bid, you wanna leave a call to action. One of my previous guests who is an Upwork superstar, Miss Morgan Akins, gave this tip to us and I have used it as well. That's to leave a call to action at the end of your project pitch. So rather than just leaving it and saying, thanks a lot, you say, here are the next steps for moving forward with me. And then you leave the description of what they can do to take the next steps. A really cool thing to do is to leave a link to a calendar that allows them to sign up for a time to talk with you. Calendly, Dot com is something that is free for you to use that allows you to do this very thing. So sign up at Calendly and leave them a call to action in your job description. And number seven on how to make a winning bid on Upwork is you need to change how you look at rejection. A no is feedback, not 
failure. And I've said this before, we've discussed this in a lot of the podcast on the self-made web designer. Every time a client passes on hiring you, it's not time to chalk it up to something like fate or maybe even give up altogether. You should be analyzing and thinking critically on what you did and how the client responded. And then tailor what you're doing next time to make it even better for the next project. By doing this, even though you might be failing a lot at the very beginning, you're destined to get better and better at pitching on Upwork projects and become more and more likely to actually win those projects. And listen, I know it's never fun to hear no as a freelancer. And on Upwork, a lot of times you don't even hear no. They just never get in contact with you. So you're just left kind of wondering, is this ever going to happen or not? And then finally you have to come to the conclusion, well, it's been a few days or maybe a few weeks. I'm just going to move on. But as freelancers, we have to go through tons of this type of interaction with clients. We, we go through tons of rejection and it can get pretty taxing. But if you look at that rejection as a chance to improve and not an attack on you as a person, you won't be able to help but grow and get better as a freelancer. So with every rejection, analyze what you did and how you might do it differently. If you don't, it was a wasted rejection and you're bound to make the same mistake again. But if you do, you can't help but get better and better and become more and more likely to win pitches and bids on Upwork projects. Well, I hope all of this information was helpful for you on your journey to winning projects on Upwork. This is stuff that I've had to learn the hard way. I've had to go through the process of getting rejected or getting ghosted by clients and then figuring out, was it me or was it you? Or I don't know, maybe I should just go cry and quit altogether. But I kept going and I eventually figured it out. And I know that you can too. And hopefully you can bypass a little bit of the heartache that I have had to go through in my earlier days. Well, it's been a lot of fun talking all about Upwork bids with you on this week's episode. Don't forget if you want the project pitch template, you can download that right now for free from selfmadewebdesigner.com on this episode's page or in the show notes. So make sure that you look for that. Next week is going to be another great. I've got some more awesome interviews coming up that I'm super excited to share with you. They're going to be fantastic and you are going to love them. So next Wednesday night, midnight, the next episode drops. Stay up with me. We will do it together. Until then, don't forget, if you don't quit, you win.